evening, everyone. Welcome to the behind the scenes stage. I'm stage host Pablo Hidalgo. And this stage has become the place for a really awesome expanded universe panels. Yes. Woo! The tradition continues in the next hour or so. I know it will, it definitely will, because we've got a great lineup here. And uh, let me introduce the folks who are joining me. Uh, right next to me is editor from Delray, Erich Schoenerweiss. <laughs> we have artist Doug Wheatley, and we really think he's known for his episode three comics adaptation and the dark times. And you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, has he done an essential guy? I uh, just hold on to that thought, right? <laughs> Next, then we have the co-author of The Essential uh, Atlas and author of uh, The Essential Guide to Warfare, Jason Cron. <laughs> you've seen his artwork in many Essential Guide, and you've seen his artwork on celebration prints that sell out instantly. <laughs> Mr. Chris Travis. <laughs> your neck now because a lot of it is on the uh, celebration badges this, this year. And next to Chris, new to the Essential Guide fold, we have Mr. Jeff Carlisle. <laughs> Not a shady for the clusters. Who's also sold out this year. That's too. right. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Alright, so um, let's get started. Oops. Oh, oh. Yep. There we go. Oh, little tease there. All right, so we can start with uh, just a little bit of business here, and then we'll get to the guys that you guys really want to talk to. Um, I'm really happy to announce that we're going to start releasing the Essential Guide books as ebooks. Um, it's going to start with uh, Pablo's Essential Readers Companion and Jason's Essential Guide to Warfare. Uh, both will be released in all ebook formats on. October 2nd, which is the on-sale date for the Essential Readers Companion, and uh, and then over the following months into next year, et cetera, et cetera, we're going to go back and uh, and pick up the other Essential Guides, Atlas, and Guides of the Forest, <coughs> and Species Characters, et cetera, et cetera. So we're really excited about those, and there's probably going to be some cool little special features and stuff in them, so more information can come on that. Um, other bit of business, uh, the next essential guide after the essential reader's companion, and this isn't exactly news because we've talked about it on the Facebook page and you guys know this is coming, but Dan Wallace is writing uh, the next essential guide to characters that's coming out next summer. So we're really excited about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The big bit of news I have for you has something to do with the man sitting next to me. Um, this is really a dream come true for me, but Doug Wheatley is going to be illustrating the entire book. And all of you who were at the Dark Horse panel the other day, that kind of mystery project that Randy kept bringing up that he couldn't talk about yet, this is it. So uh, we're really, really excited about this, and we've actually got a few uh, little teaser images for you. These are some of the finished pieces that Doug's done already. I'm so incredibly excited to be a part of this project. When I, when I first read the email from Arish, I was like, my heart started beating pretty quick. And I was like, oh, I gotta check my schedule. I, I'm hoping that it's gonna be able to fit. And once that was worked out. I emailed him back. I'm like, I'm your guy. I, I really want to do this. And, and uh, yeah, I started with this piece actually because Cad Bane is my absolute favorite uh, character off of the um, off the uh, Clone Wars cartoon. And, and so uh, yeah, I started with this piece uh, just to, to get into it. Got a couple more here. Boss, Mary Frank, that's gonna want this. <laughs> <laughs> right now, she's gonna want to come. Ben Kenobi. We're also going to, you'll see Ben as the, uh, the younger version that we're, we're used to from Clone Wars and the prequel movies as well, but I particularly really like this one. Yes, ben Kenobi was a bit of a, a challenge because I wanted to try and do something with that, that silhouette that hasn't been seen. And, uh, you know, he's, he's such an iconic character, it's so easy to fall into, yeah. you know. 
ever got Yoda? What I like to call the young Yoda. <laughs> then we've got old Yoda. Uh, so this is uh, 150 character illustrations by Doug Wheatley in this book. I'm just thrilled to have it. It's been a blast working with him so far. We've actually been working on this since <coughs> April about, something like that. I think. Right. So it's yeah. been a few months and it's just been a dream come true so far. So. Really excited about this, and we're looking at, I believe, middle of July next year for it. So more to come. We'll be teasing images throughout the year on the Facebook page. Yeah. All right. So now I think we'll uh, just let Mr. Fry take over here for a bit. His baby. My my baby. Yeah. I was um, when I, I was here at the at the last celebration, we were still working on warfare, and I remember. Um, I remember kind of looking at my watch. We'll get about two minutes in before somebody asks if we were addressing the, the three million uh, clones, um, which I call the three millionth rail of, uh, of Star Wars fandom. Um, but, uh, you know, so it was a great relief when this book came out and, and, and people you know, acknowledged that, yeah, we had addressed that and a lot of other stuff and seemed to enjoy the book. It's, this book was just an enormous, uh, a ton of fun to do. Um, the way... Some of you may know that this book was originally the essential guide to the military uh, with Karen Travis. Um, when it came to me, a lot of people asked me what's the, the reason for the title change. And the reason was that um, just drawing on the lessons that, that Dan Wallace and I learned in the Essential Atlas, like I really saw it as basically an exploration of the Star Wars galaxy and Star Wars history, but through war, but whether that was strategy, great leaders, famous battles, weapons, etc., it would be kind of a, a shifting view of everything through that lens, if you will. And so, you know, I thought warfare would would convey that better than uh, something that seemed to be really about, about units and tactics and everything else like that. So we just went on and just, you know, we had, you know, Erich and I had an enormous fun working on it, and, uh, and my my uh, esteemed co-author Paul Urquhart, who couldn't be here, was you know, obviously invaluable and, and terrific to work with. But um, one thing that always strikes me about books is, you know, in this case, two people get their name on the cover there. But you know, the only reason the book ever exists is because of so many, of so many people working really, really hard. Whether you know it's Harish keeping me on the straight and narrow as, as much as is humanly possible, or you know, the superb artists on this book, who we'll, we'll see some of their work in a minute, or, you know, just lots and lots of other people. Um, you know, Dan contributed a bunch of stuff about the Wayne Mancy storm, which this is this is the right panel for some of you to actually know what that is. <laughs> um, you know, Mike, Mike Kogi and I, you know, did lots of lots of things with like him, the despot, a character that we just love, and, and, and Pablo, too. And, um, uh, Nathan O'Keefe, who I think is here, raise your hand if you're here. Nathan, um, Nathan and I, you know, fired back all these wonderful, like, super geeky notes about uh, what became the the uh, Pious Day of Crusades, and that was enormous fun. And you know, we had uh, we had three readers on the Force.net who helped us out with the early manuscript. Um, is uh, is Black Myron here? There he is. Who we got to meet today, which was a, a huge thrill. And you know, as well as just reaching out on the boards when I was stuck on something or, or, or um, you know, wanted some feedback. And, you know, and then, of course, everybody at Lucasfilm. There was one point fairly early on in the project where um, Paul and I were like, well, you know, blasters, the same blaster, you, you flip some kind of switch and you, you know, you can blow a Durasteel door open or, you know, burn someone who crisp, and you flip a switch and then it, it makes these, like, blue circles and it just stuns them, but, you know, how does that work exactly? And we, we uh, turned to Pablo and turned to Leland, and within, like, a couple hours, you know, Dave Filoni had chipped in and all these people from LucasArts, and, like, my Gmail wouldn't hold still, it just kept updating, and I kept reading this stuff, and I was like, I was just sitting there, and I was like, I have the greatest job in the world. <laughs> So this book was it was just an enormous amount of fun, um, you know, whether it was uh, filling out the Red Squadron ranks from the Battle of Yavin, which turned into, you know, Leland and me going over, like, split-second continuity bloopers and figuring out how to make them work, to, uh, 
you know, to, uh, to talking about the Battle of Endor to everything else. It was uh, it was really just a joy to work on, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have it out there and no longer be this uh, mysterious project, but be a, you know a real thing we can we can talk about and enjoy. Can we take a look at some of the art? Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, Grand Admiral Teshek. Um, this is a wonderful picture by uh, by Drew Baker. Um, this was him. He's been been sent to die by the Emperor, and uh, the ha the Happen fleet is waiting to, to tear him apart. And uh, I love the way Drew captured that he knows what's happening, but meanwhile, everybody in those crew pits is like, w "What are we doing? How are we going to get out of this?" And he's sort of saying, "Well, we're not." That's sort of the whole point. I like that we get to see the Happen fleet. I think that's pretty cool. Also, uh, just to point out, Drew, is, uh, he's got a booth at the show just outside of Artist Alley, and I mean, he paints oil on canvas, and he's got the, a lot of these paintings there and framed. Um, I really recommend that you guys pop by this afternoon and check it out, and it's just really awesome to see. These are the uh, Teenies Worships by Ian Fullwood from the inside uh, title page. This was, you know, it struck me that we had a couple of references to teenage ships based on what they had influenced the group, but that we'd really never seen one. And I thought, you know, here's a chance to come up with something really iconic. So I made these these unbelievably horrible sketches, which I think I was I was foolish enough to put on my blog for the end notes, but they got passed on to Ian and we kind of it was reverse engineer kind of Padme's chrome starship and hut warships and, and early Republic stuff and then kind of take it back thousands of years and you know poor Ian once he figured out what I what I've been trying to draw and trying to express really ran with it and, and created something I think is you know you can see signs of, of later Star Wars stuff in it but I think it's unique. I just I just love those shots. Uh, Modi, the, the the great map maker from the Atlas uh, was kind enough to come back for you know, a, a few maps. This is kind of Spex's Crusades, the, uh, the old Pius Dia stuff, and you know, I was just having money on a project was was enormous fun. To explore more uh, more geographic craziness, which I never missed. And I've learned that if I'm going to do an essential guidebook with Jason, I have to assume there's going to be at least one map. In it. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. Uh, this is Mandalore the Ultimate with his uh, with his um, his minions, a terrific Darren Tan. Work. Um, yeah, Darren is really, I mean, all, everybody on this book are, are superb artists. It was really great seeing Darren's stuff. I just love the energy and, and the, everything, the light, the perspective in this shot. Uh, this was, uh, here's a Boba Fett Darhan in the Shell Huts by, uh, by Chris Scalp. Um, I have loved the character Darhan for years and years and years, and uh, so the uh, the chance to, to do a little excerpt of, of Boba Fett talking about this with, uh, what is it, balance sheet, the little, yeah. little spider guy. And I knew we'd made it on this drawing because we, we sent it in and, and Leland popped up like five seconds later and he, he was like, I want an action figure of that. <laughs> so, uh, all right, mission accomplished. And I, somebody started a Facebook page uh, for I a... I like uh, that Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I have too. I, please, all of you go like it as well. I want my dar hunt. The funny thing about this is... Uh, when, uh, as a central reader's companion, was in development, I didn't know that this art was in Warfare. Warfare hadn't come out yet, so I always described images that I wanted to see illustrated in the reader's companion, and I described this just in text exactly as it appears. Because that was the key scene I wanted to illustrate. And sure enough, it's there. I'm like, okay, you can have that one. <laughs> this is uh, Jason Palmer. It's a, a reunion of Trade Federation crews and their families. Um, one thing we tried to do was do some certain points of view on things, shall we say? And um, so, you know, there's sometimes unreliable narrators about stuff. Uh, the other side of that, though, was, you know, we... The Trade Federation couldn't have been this, like, scheming evil force at the beginning. They had to, like the Republic itself, have come from something that, you know, was, was noble and worked well and then descended. I, I thought Jason did a great job. I really loved the, the grand reunion. <laughs> It's just it's a beautiful shot. Uh, this is uh, John Van Fleet, the uh, smuggler ship uh, from Dark Times, um, fleeing uh, 
uh, fleeing uh, probably early early imperial forces. If you recognize, if you if this conjures up an iconic shot from the Empire Strikes Back for you, that's exactly what we were going for. And actually, Doug was kind enough to help me out with reference for the ship on this too. So. I actually missed this in the book, and it just looks freaking awesome. I'm like, wow, <laughs> what were they doing? Yeah, <laughs> This is um, a Jason Palmer a Stormtrooper recruitment poster. Uh, a funny thing I, I'm glad to say we caught was in, in the first version of this, the, the Orabesh was perfect. And then, I don't remember who it was. But I think it was Leland that caught it. Whoever it is, I owe them several beers. He said, why does it say text goes here in Orabesh? <laughs> 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 we were like, to see if you're paying attention, Leland. <laughs> He fixed, he fixed the top part, but on the bottom part, he left like a thank you message to me and Jason in there or something. And, yeah, and I'm like, no, you need to take that out. <laughs> <laughs> so. right. uh, another great Modi map. This is the reconquest of the Rim, um, the early, the, the good empire, so to speak, when they're taking the galaxy back from separatists and slavers. Um, I also had a ton of fun with this, this section because I've always loved the character uh, Shay Hublin who you only saw in one Russ Manning strip. You couldn't see his face because Princess Leia was throwing a drink in it. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and I, I just kind of, you do this a lot, and I just crossed my fingers that nobody would get there first. And nobody did, so Shane Hubble got to have some adventures. Oh, the uh, Drew Baker again, uh, female stormtroopers. Um, and, you know, I had great fun this year. Every time I saw a female costumer who was just in plain old stormtrooper gear, I was, I would like ran, ran over and, and tried to be creepy and took their picture. <laughs> and that, you know, maybe uh, talking about the female stormtroopers, the Empire maybe had some small contribution to that. I just love this picture, particularly the look on their faces. You know, what's interesting, uh, and I don't know if you knew this at the time, but I think it may have surfaced in uh, in Rensler's uh, making of Star Wars. But there's these notes that George Lucas has uh, that that he he had from the making of the first Star Wars where he did a series of interviews that established and helped build up the universe for early publishing. And in one of them he says, yeah, there, there are female stormtroopers, there's a certain percentage that are female. Wow. So, yeah. so that dates back, that's, like, that's in George Cannon's. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Bruno Wernick, uh, the dark troopers, of course. Uh, Bruno contributed a, a bunch of wonderful things to Warfare, just the, the atmosphere and mood of these amazed me. Um, you know, one thing is true, uh, just as a writer, is you work and work and work, and at the end of it, you just have you just have a manuscript. And the part for me that is always really magical is that you know it, that gets handed over to Harish, and then you can kind of, in a way, sit back a little bit and just watch the design emerge and watch the art emerge, and you you know you become you, know, you sometimes feel like a cheerleader, and usually I'm like, wow, that's wonderful, that's wonderful too, but. It's a real treat as an author just to be able to just kind of enjoy it. Uh, this is another another uh, Bruno shot. Apple's facing wires. Uh, the back cover's similar, but you know, I, I don't think these guys are going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I, we'd have to ask Bruno. Maybe that's right before some grand stratagem turns the tide, but eh, next to the time for these guys, I think. Uh, this is a Paul Yule secret, uh, secret rebel meeting with the, the famous X-wing, and I love just look at the uh, look at the character. Like all of their faces look different, and you know there is. Um, we were talking about this in the McQuarrie panel, how how you know Ralph McQuarrie's art looked like a story you could step into, and you know I feel that way here. Like there's clearly you can almost sense the conversation they've been having and what's been happening. This actually. Doug was supposed to do this piece, and just for scheduling reasons, he, he wasn't able to do it. And Paul had already finished a couple that he had agreed to do the book, to do for the book. And I was like, you know what? Uh, let me just take a shot and see if he'll do one or two more. And I called him up, and he jumped on it, and he did this one and the piece with Anakin and Ahsoka. He did both of those in about two weeks. It's just fantastic. <laughs> this, this is pretty nice. Kind of some Hillary walks. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I think this was one that when Jason and I were putting the art list together, both of us agreed immediately that we had to show the Ewoks as being like ferocious little terrors. <laughs> <laughs> and so this was one that we were both really, really looking forward to.
forward to. Yeah, the, the writing of this was fun too. We told from the perspective of an imperial trooper, and I was like, well, he's got to be telling somebody, and I was like, sell it to Wani, why not? Well, and originally it was just going to be half a page in the book, so it was just, sorry, it was just the bottom portion of the painting. And then as the layouts were coming together, I realized that I needed it to be a full page, so I went back to Chris Scalf and I'm like, we got to make this a full page. Can you add a little something on top? So we added the ATST, and my favorite bit is just the guy kind of slumped over, like. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing just came together. Uh, Stefan Martinera, he also did a, a, a superb one of the Targum. Just, I mean, look at that, look at that thing. You know, I mean, scale can be tricky. Well, it says the writer surrounded by great artists, but <laughs> actually, it all can be tricky kids, but you know, looking at that thing, you, you, you can know it's just gigantic, and you can almost feel it coming out of the book and, and ready to crush it. And if this thing looks especially cinematic, that's, you know, that's because Stefan is a uh, uh, really concept art. Yeah. He worked on episode two, so this, this feels like right out of Star Wars concept art. Derek Tan's uh, Hut Worships. Um, I really... I really like the way they summon up, you know, um, the sail barges and the Ubrickian designs without just looking like kind of sail barges with engines on them. Like they're they're part of the same family, kind of cousins as you were, but just do a wonderful job like that. And I love that uh, that imperious looking hut, proving the work. Well, and originally too, the sails on it were just simply sails, like the uh, like the sail barge we've seen in the movie and. As Jason pointed out, he's like, they wouldn't have sails in space, but we want to keep that look. So, inspired by Dooku's solar sailor, it was like, well, what if we, they were that same sort of concept? So, we had him, he had, we had him change them to the solar sails so we could keep the look, but they added a practicality to it as well. This is a Hansel Lasau alias Fractal Sponge. Um, it just, you know, did a lot of really, really wonderful shots of. Uh, particularly of, of dreadnoughts and battle cruisers, which was a lot of fun because it's a it's a part of Star Wars we don't see a lot. Back there, in fact, you can see a ship that was uh, uh, Admiral Giel's ship from the old Marvel. That was fun to do. But um, Ansel, it was also great because somebody on on the Force.net sent me a note. He was like, "Hey, you know, I know you, you, you worked on this book. You really need to see this guy's art." And I was like, "Well, you know, I, I obviously can't promise anything. I'll take a look." And I took a look, and you know, honestly, sometimes you do that to be polite. I have to say that I looked at this and I was like, "This is amazing." And I showed it to Eric, and she was like, "Yeah, this is amazing." And, you know, so here we were. Um, uh, you should talk about this one. Well, it, it turns out that John Van Fleet loves droids, which was something I didn't know until we started working on this book. And actually, it was Shea Hublin painting and he snuck a little droid down in the corner um, and so we're kind of at the tail end of putting the book together and we had half a page empty and John Rensselaer at Lucasfilm who was editing the book with me he was like yeah we really need to fill this page somehow and the subject of the text just happened to be chatty battle droids so I called John up at the last second. I'm like, hey, look, I know you love droids. Can you just do like a half page piece for this? I'm thinking, you know, something where one droid shooting the other one's head off and we just see the commander like holding his head in shame. <laughs> and, and I think just a few hours he turned this around and awesome. just blew me and Jason away. I mean, we both want t shirts with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Battle droids' faces can't change. They can't. They don't have expressions. But but look at these guys. I mean, they, you know exactly what each one of them is, is thinking or trying to think. And, you know, just, yeah, this was the cat piece for the book, and you know I was just like. It's like a Three Stooges scene too. Oh, this project. Yes. Yes, I know this quite well. So, um, my understanding, you had something that, at your booth that you were showing people, is that right? Yeah, I actually have a, uh, we don't have the finished book yet, but I brought a full printout of the book, like a bind up that we've got at the booth. So after the panel, if you want to come down and flip through it, please come by, just ask to see it, we'd be happy to show it to you. Because this does not come out until October, and I know that it, it did move, it was scheduled for an earlier date, but the reality hit us as, as we put this together, much like when we were working on the, the, the completed uh, encyclopedia, 
Uh, we went into it thinking we knew how much work would be required for it, and then when like rubber hit the road, we realized, whoa, wait, hold on, this book is going to be much bigger than anticipated. And so, as far as essential guide format, it's kind of a, its own format, separate from it, you know it won't line up quite well with with your other essential guides, but there's a good reason for that. This thing clocks in at almost 500 pages. Oh, wow. and, uh, 496. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't squeeze four more. I didn't want to go over 500. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so it's quite, quite large. And, and uh, I've been working on it for over two years now. And the requirement was, you know, essentially, we, we were just trying to do a guide to fiction. That's, that's you know, what, what does that mean? So let's, let's give a summary of every Star Wars fiction story that there is out there that we can. And so, that's a tall order. So we had, we had to pare it down. Uh, if you were to ask me, well, does it have everything? Does it have this? Does it have this? It's like, no, it, it doesn't have everything. We, we had to make some parameters, but at the same time, we really wanted to keep the value of what this book represents. So, you know, I'm going to tell you some of the things that aren't in it, but then I'm going to tell you what's, what is in it, and hopefully you can make the, the judgment that, that, that we made the right choice. Um, there, comics aren't in it. There are mentions of comics that we think are important particularly to novel readers that connect to time frames and, and storylines. So they are mentioned, but it's not an exhaustive list of, of comics. Very early on, I did an attempt at putting all comics in there, and I wrote chapter one, the Old Republic chapter, and that chapter ended up like being five times the length that was originally allotted for it. I realized, okay, this is not going to work. We're going to have to take comics off. Furthermore, Dark Horse has already done their comics compendiums, and we hope that they do more of them, and so that the two of these, both of these books can work well in, in, in conjunction with each other. Um, and then we made some decisions about young reader fiction. <coughs> we, like, we realized that we, you know, it's a very important part, especially especially young young adult fiction. People really love the, the works of Jude Watson, so that is definitely in here. But we made the call not to go younger than eight years old. So some of the storybooks and the eight by eights in the Random House and Jar Jar Mistake and, and whatever what was those, the one. Like, you know, that, that kind of stuff that's really focused towards younger children are, are not in here. My, my Anakin of the Rescue is not in here. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> uh, but, and I know someone in here cares about this, the Jedi Prince series <laughs> does get a sign. <laughs> it does get a mention. It's a pretty big sign. It's a pretty substantial <laughs> sign. All the covers are in there. So. I believe the term Moffrance is actually name checked in the text. <laughs> <laughs> We also made the decision not to include uh, sort of variable narrative, your choose your own adventure type books, because they didn't want to go in there and say what the definitive storyline is for some of those. Thankfully, there aren't a lot of those, and they are mentioned as subject matter, but they don't get what we call a proper entry. Um, and then the sort of sidebar fiction that would appear in role playing games or video game guides, those aren't in there either. But short stories, the kind that appear in the adventure journal, they're right there. Source material isn't. So source material that's kind of peppered with fictional elements isn't, but a standalone short story is. So that still leaves us with a lot of work. 